How to make sure your first property flip isn't your first property flop. We're going to keep it to the traditional type of flip. And just so you know what I mean, most people, when they say a flip, they mean buy <laughs> refurbish and sell a property um, but you can also do don't buy it refurbish it and sell it which is called an assisted sale you can do vendor finance type deals you can do options on it you can do title splits but let's just keep it simple of buying refurbish and selling the property and these are the five biggest mistakes I see and number three is the biggest impact. Number one is missing off integral costs. Now there's the obvious ones. Let's see if we can get it all streaming it off. The purchase price, the stamp duty, cost of finance, you've got your refurbishment, you've got your utilities, your council tax, your water. What else have I missed? Timelines as you're going through and all of these things really build up. So again, your legal fees, your brokerage fees. Um, the single biggest thing when it comes to costs is people underestimating the timescale. So number one, making sure you've got your costs in there, but each month that goes by really impacts things. Like I kind of feel like I'm condensing 15 mistakes in one here, but it, it really relates to the same thing. Ultimately, people miss out costs of actually doing a flip. Number one is the ongoing cost, which is going to be your interest cost and, of course, your holding cost, which is your council tax, uh, your mortgage costs, your utilities, council tax, etc. That links heavily to number two, which is underestimating the time frames of the property. So, as I said, a majority of people on it and actually. What would be interesting is put in the comments, how long do you think a flip takes? And this will give me a real insight. Now, if you said six months, I can near guarantee you it will not be. You've got to take account of the buying time, the legals, the financing routes, the refurbishment, and then, of course, listing the property, choosing the agent and selling it. Almost definitely, it will take anything between 9 and 12 months, dependent on where you're at. And by the way, quick tip with that, make sure you are doing everything to get your sale at the start of summer. So spring going into summer, you will maximize the speed of your sale and the purchase price that you get. Because in the summer, everyone's happy and the property is just going to look a lot better in the sun. All right, so timelines are everything. And the reason to factor this in is that, well, two things with this. Number one, the cost, as I mentioned in point number one, they really mount up. So let's say you've got a £200,000 loan on the property and it's costing you 1% a month on a bridge. Well, that is £2,000 a month. Then you've got your empty council tax, which some areas of the UK, by the way, council tax is double per month if the property is vacant. Check that out of your local council. It's not all of them. Then you've got your water, your bills, etc. So let's say you're at 2,600 a month, which isn't crazy on a 200 grand property. So let's say you're delayed by three months. Well, that delay has cost you directly 7,500 pounds, which in itself is fine, apart from the fact it wasn't predicted. So you've got that delay. So the top tip in order to help with this is do everything before you need to. That sounds crazy, right? It's kind of like in business. You hire your first employee before you need them. And it's the same with this. You get your refurb team in the property to price up before you've purchased the property. You line up the exchange and completion and you get them booked in before that date. You can actually exchange and allowing for access. So you've legally exchanged on the property. You know you're going to complete in it. You can get your build team in there. And the first four weeks of a refurbishment are what delay it the most. Most people don't really think about it. So, ah, we're near the beginning. Don't worry. The rip out's only been delayed a week. No, that is the start of the end. How you start is how you play out the project and is how you finish the project. So make sure your timelines are tight. Number three, which I would say is the biggest mistake, is you pay too much attention to the purchase price. <laughs> So you see a property on right move. Let's say it's listed at 200,000, needs a bit of work. And then most people go like this. Okay, so it's listed at 200 and put 200 in my calculator. Then I've got stamp duty at 200. That's going to be 6,000 pounds. Then I've got my legal, as I say, 1,500. Then my broker, 500. Bleh, bleh. Wrong, 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 wrong. Honestly, I don't give a shit about the purchase price. It's irrelevant. Like you already know if it's listed with an estate agent, it's overpriced. That is a 90% chance that happening. 
By the way, that was a complete made-up statistic. But genuinely, a majority of it, on average, here is a fact for you, the average property listed online is 106% of the actual completion price, which means anything that is listed online, it, I can near guarantee it's roughly 5 or 6% above what it will actually sell for. Nice little tip for you there. So what should you do? You focus on the end value of the property. So you're going to look at the square footage at the end. You're going to look at what spec you're going for. And then you and the like for like house, ideally within a quarter of a mile, if not half a mile, try to find as close to a like to like of what you're looking for. And by the way, you can do this by going on right move, go up to sold, type in the postcode within a quarter of a mile, and then you can find it as you can see here. So when you go through that, that's going to give you the best odds of understanding the price. And by the way, if there's like a load of detached uh, houses in the area, let's say it's a detached, and they all look amazing, great spec, but none of them are quite like yours, no worries, get three to five of those within half a mile, as close as you can in terms of like the type of house, the spec, etc. Then what you're going to go on is on the EPC, the Energy Performance Certificate, you're going to find the square footage to each property, and then you're going to divide the purchase prices by that square footage and then if you've got five of those you're going to get an idea of the price per square foot or per square meter if that's what you prefer then what you do is you find that average price you times that by the square footage of what your property is going to be and you've got your end value then what you do is you've got end value of the property you take out your profit let's say you want 15 percent. so let's say the end value is 300,000. i want 15 percent profit which is 45 grand so now i'm at 255 then I'm going to take off my refurb, boom, 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 all the way down. And the last one you're going to take off is stamp duty. And the reason you do that is the stamp duty is obviously a percentage of the purchase price. So say it ends up that after all of those profit, costs, etc., I'm at 185. Then I'm going to take off the stamp duty, which is going to be 3%. Let's just call it five grand to make it easy. So it's 180 grand. So the fact it was listed at 200 is really just an indication of what they're looking at. But I could pay 180,000. If you're watching this and you're thinking, do you know what? I actually do need to get properly educated in this. If you're, if you're actually looking to build up uh, your property wealth, your property portfolio and wealth in general within property and business, then put education in the comments. I'd love to give you a free one-to-one -one consultation session to find out where you're at and where you want to get to. And if we can support you on that journey, great. We'll talk about what that looks like. But worst case, you leave with a strategic step-by-step -step plan. So put education in the comments. I'll send you a link and I'll put a link in the comments and pin it to the top for you as well. Number four is ignoring the market, ignoring the local economy, right? It's ridiculous where people think of bricks and mortar. So let's say a bottle of water. I don't have a prop right now, so you're going to have to visualize it. Picture a bottle of water up here. So we've got a bottle of water. If I have this bottle of water and you go to Aldi, is it Aldi? What's the big one? Costco. You go to Costco and you buy it in bulk buy. How much do you think you would pay for that bottle of water? Probably the equivalent of what? 20, 30 pence maybe if, as a, a big pack, whatever. So 20 pence, 30 pence. Okay, cool. Let's say then I go to on the train and they ask me, offer me the same Harrogate bottle of water that you get on Virgin trains. How much is that going to cost? £1.50, right? Okay, so same bottle of water. What if you go to Mayfair, you go out to a club and it's three in the morning and you're like, oh, go to the bar. I want a bottle of water. They give you the same bottle of water. And what is it? Like eight quid? Probably not even exaggerating, right? So it's the same bottle of water but a different price based on the location just because it bricks and mortar. Don't you find it crazy that you can have a three bed semi in one location and it's worth a hundred grand. You can have it in a completely different location hundreds of miles away down south, more than likely in London, and it could be a million pounds. Why is it so different? Well, it's not the property, it's the land. And so the biggest mistake that I see is people will buy a property at a great price, a shit location. The economics don't make sense. There's not enough demand to get a fast sell. And so they're basing their numbers on a dream not to come reality and they're expecting it to come through but it just doesn't and so they end up lingering and having the property far too long end up accepting a price that is way too low and then they end up losing money like idiots 
And why can I say that? Because I've done the exact same thing, right? So I'm not just preaching about uh, all of these things. A lot of the lessons that I share on this YouTube channel are the mistakes that I made. And many of you know the story of the property in Burnley, number 36, Burdett Street. Shit property, shit area, 220 miles away, but it's all I could afford. So remember, price is what you pay, value is what you get. Focus on the great economics and the great value areas. Number five is neglecting your market and therefore your marketing. You always want to think about like a lot of people getting property and they're like money, 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 money. It's like, no, you are there to serve a customer. And in any business, the more you understand your customer avatar, the better you're going to be able to deliver. But it's the same with property. When I'm doing a flip, a lot of people, they'll do this ridiculously stunning refurbishment and it's got a, like a ceiling price here, but they now need to sell it here and they just can't do it. And so you have to have your end avatar in mind. You need to know who your customer is. What are they looking for? And I've seen it before where people will buy like a beautiful four bed um, semi detached property with good or outstanding schools and then they make it like a bachelor pad. And it's like, what are you doing? It's clearly the area for a young family to move into. So you need to understand that. And then within that, people don't budget for their marketing. Yes, you're giving it to an estate agent, but it's your job to sell your house. So many people will spend thousands, tens of thousands, go over budget on their actual refurbishment and spend zero point fuck all on the marketing, which is absolutely crazy. You would be better, I genuinely believe this, shaving two grand off the refurbishment and then putting two grand into Facebook ads, advertising that property to your perfect customer avatar in your local area. And I can near guarantee not one of you, tell me in the comments if you have actually, have you ever sold a property and put your own marketing budget behind selling? It. I would be shocked and fair play if you have, you are a professional. But the reality is most people don't do it. So have your client in mind, your market in mind and get your marketing right. So remember, getting all of this is right. The property in itself is actually the easy part. But when you educate yourself on the market uh, analysis, location analysis, the economics, how to price up your refurbishments, how to get the right cost of finance, because if you get lending at 20% versus 8%, how to find those, how to negotiate it, and getting educated around those will make you tens if not hundreds of thousands in profit that you're missing out for on a yearly basis. And if you don't wanna make those mistakes, you're ready to get educated, put education in the comments below. I'd like to offer you a free one-to-one -one strategy session to help you along that journey this year. If you're new to the channel, make sure to hit subscribe and the notification bell. Destroy the like button if I added even 10 seconds of value and I'll see you in the next video.